Live from San Juan, Puerto Rico, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Unbound. Brought to you by Blockchain Industries. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE. This is our exclusive coverage in Puerto Rico for Blockchain Unbound. This is a conference where the local entrepreneurs, industry legends, financers, uh, funders, everyone's coming together from blockchain, cryptocurrency, and the decentralized web, a lot of great use cases. We have the politicians as well here in Puerto Rico kind of enticing the community to do more here. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. We're here with Luis Maquez, who's the CEO of Grain Chain. Uh, a startup out of Texas, doing very interesting things with blockchain and a real good example of really the value proposition of reducing steps it takes to get something done, creating value, and then sharing that value. Luis, good to see you, thanks for coming on. Thank you for inviting me. So we, talk, we talked yesterday last uh, here off camera about what you're doing on, but I want you to take a minute to explain to the folks what you guys do and why blockchain, what's the difference? Sure. So. I would say about five years ago, we got approached by a large-scale farmer, and he asked us to find a solution to be able to modernize his business. You know, as we all know, the farming industry is uh, not as not as technical as uh, as a lot of the other industri industries. So we went out in search, and we just couldn't find a solution. So we built the appropriate solution to take a seed from the ground and take it all the way to the commodities market in an instant, instead of three to four weeks. And uh, so basically, what we do is we join the buyer, uh, the buyers of the actual soft commodities, and we allow them to create smart contracts with individual farmers. Um, this ensures not only the payment to the farmer, but it allows the farmer to get paid instantly. What does it do really for our, our, our overall industry? Our buyers gain instant custody of the actual grain the second it crosses the scale. That changes everybody's life dramatically. So middlemen get kind of disruptive, but, but before we get into that, I want to dig into this, sure. it's important, because I'm from California, I've okay. a huge farming thing there, cultural thing uh, going on there. What's your background, how did you get here? I mean, uh, how long have you been doing it? Sure. And when did you jump on the blockchain uh, as an opportunity? So we've been uh, developing software for the last 17 years. We've done it for the insurance industry and for the gov for small uh, state governments. And um, we, we live in, we're, we're in Texas and we have uh, personal relationships with many farmers. Yeah. We saw a problem and we needed to solve it. In the last year, we went ahead and started applying the blockchain to the process. And the blockchain is the perfect form. When you have a, uh, two parties who really, really don't need to trust each other, and, and, and need to trust each other, with a distributed ledger, you've got a perfect scenario. If we're able to write a contract and a thousand people be able to verify that contract and we're able to transfer money from one person to another without the two parties being involved, we've got a perfect scenario. Yeah, that's and, awesome. And, and that's where blockchain really, really affects the agriculture yeah. industry and, and our farmers. You know, I said in theCUBE uh, this morning, we were talking about it last, I was talking about it last night with some folks, the killer app for blockchain is money. Yes. <laughs> so the common thread in all this is money. Just like the first computer in the TCP IP revolution, it was email. Yes. That was a 20 year killer app. It's kind of, we hate email now, but the point is, you're in the money transaction business, but there's a supply chain involved. This is where it gets interesting. This is where I think you're onto something really nice here because you're essentially creating a better contractual environment between buyer and seller, mm -hmm. but the product still needs to move to the market. Yes. This is where you're innovating. Can you talk up specifically about how you're disrupting that piece? Sure, so basically what we're able to do is not only allow farmers to involve themselves in the forward and futures market, also the spot market within the actual system. So it integrates with, the, with, with actual trading applications, but it also integrates with their futures market and forward market uh, contractors. So we're taking a group of people who are not very technical, and we're giving them that ability to do what yeah. the big brokers do in the overall industry. So give an example, just give a, like a uh, run of the mill example sure. use case. Sure, one of, one of our farmers who's got uh, uh, five million pounds of, of corn does, a, does a, a forward market with a buyer. The second he crosses the scale, it'll settle that, that uh, contract instantly, and then it'll actually notify him, say it's in your best interest to go ahead and close the other three uh, million pounds because the price just spiked. He hits one button, he makes more money than he's ever made, 
uh, on, on any contract he's done in the past. And that's because what happened? What was the old way? What was the old way? The old way is he pretty much put it in the silo and uh, sent the, the, the papers to an accounting office. Three, four weeks later, he figured out how much he had. Then he gave it to a broker to be able to look at, a, at, at the actual uh, inventory. They put it up on the market and they make the, the actual uh, commission. So they make the spread. Yeah. They increase, they mark it up. Exactly. They take the spread down. And, and then they still got to send paperwork back to the guy and say, this is what we sold. Exactly, <laughs> and then eventually get paid. This pretty much turns that entire process into an instant action. This is a game changer. This is basically taking all those steps and a lot of potential miscues could happen in that process. Absolutely. Time wasted, errors. There's, and, and you know, it, I, I don't want to put any bad actors, but it also eliminates the bad actors out of the scenario. We're, we're, the, our governance system actually integrates directly into the scales, gets signatures from the scientific reading instruments. So we're, we're, we're removing bad actors, yeah. and we're removing errors, yeah. and we're speeding the process. You have a computer science degree, um, and software background like yourself, but also got an MBA uh, from Babson College. Um, one of the things, words they use in the MBA class is value chain. The yeah. value chain, you know, the activities on, and as part of the creating value, um, kind of a documented thing. But the word blockchain, value chain, really this is a perfect example of the kinds of use cases that we see in blockchain. Absolutely. Moving a product to the market, reducing the steps it takes to do something, saving time, and being more efficient. And having an, a, a, a complete trust system. You know, when you have a farmer who's paying a 1% uh, premium to be able to ensure to get paid at 90%, and there's still litigation and everything being involved, this completely eliminates that scenario. Yeah, the other thing we talked about in theCUBE this morning and yesterday uh, in conversation I was saying is that killer apps money, which is great money, has to move around, that's what we see activity on and some bad actors there for sure, but marketplaces is also the other killer app. Do you agree? I mean, because you're essentially creating a marketplace. You need a marketplace. Absolutely. I, I actually just got approached about 10 minutes ago from a local Puerto Rican uh, gentleman who's, who's restarting a farm after the, the uh, weather event that happened here. He's trying to figure out how to get honey into the U.S. market, but is scared to sell it to just anyone. He asked me if it's possible to be able to put it, set up smart contracts with all the random buyers that want to buy his honey. This is a, yeah. an exact scenario yeah. where we're helping a community who has to start over and figure out who to sell their product to. You know, Luis, this is a great example of kind of categorically what I'm seeing across the disruption scheme um, uh, out there, which is in the cloud computing era, Amazon Web Services created a catalog of services mm -hmm. that allowed you to do use resources without having to build stuff up from scratch, provisioning servers. This is kind of happening here where you're starting to see sets of services or players, a catalog of services Absolutely. happening in business. So eventually going to the next, next level, this is, seems to be a consistent pattern. What's your take? Yeah, uh, and, uh, absolutely. It, it gets, it's allowing the, the smallest guys in the industry to the biggest guys in the industry to take advantage. When you have people using Amazon Web Services, you're having massive corporations and the one businessman owner. What we're doing here is we're giving the same opportunities for both classes of people to be able to scale, and put their product on the market without having to do a massive investment or be yeah. scared that they're going to get robbed. It's a great value proposition. I'm sure you got a lot of investors knocking on your door. Take us through what you're doing right now. You're doing an ICO. Are you raising money? And what are your expansion plans? Because I know you're in Texas. Are you in California yet? I mean, a lot of agricultural activity there. So, um, what's, your, so, what's your growth plan? So what we're doing is we're doing a token sale event and we're doing a, a, a private placement sale to accredited investors. We are trying to respect all the SEC regulations out there. Um, we're launching that at the end of this month. Um, we are currently based in Texas and we also got approached by the Mexican government to apply the technology to the state-run silos in, in Mexico. So what we're looking for is really finding people who want to help us scale this product worldwide and uh, being able to participate in our sale. If uh, you, you're able to go onto our website, grainchain.io, and sign up to our whitelist, that'll allow you to get some information on how to participate. Grain, grainchain.io, like as in correct. the grain of, of, uh, of, of, of seed. Absolutely. Okay, so what, I'm going to ask you about Puerto Rico. Yes. Um, you've been here a couple days. What's the vibe here? I mean, why uh, is this such an important event? A lot of people who are watching this aren't here. What's happening in Puerto Rico? What are you hearing in the hallways? What are some of your conversations and what are your observations? I mean, I think that uh, the, the, the reality is that Puerto Rico is, is trying to embrace technology and trying to embrace a, 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 an industry that can support the, the people here. Uh, we've seen a lot of the devastation as they're driving them around, but I, Puerto Rico's back up and running. So the reality is I feel very, very strongly about not only supporting the local economy, 
But the fact that they're supporting real technology and providing and, and trying yeah. to get real solutions into the into this country to, yeah. to restart. And the young people are really engaged on blockchain crypto. Absolutely, and uh, you know you, you'll have a lot of young. Uh, very, very aggressive developers. I've met a lot of people here who've come here, a lot of locals who, look, who are looking for work in, in blockchain and, and developers. Um, so we're, we're very excited to really, really see that everything's kind of kicking back up here in Puerto Rico. Well, my final question for you, Luis, is as an industry participant and developer uh, and player, what is this wave about? I mean, you know, you put your you know, industry hat on and expert hat on, what is happening? I mean, what is really happening with blockchain, crypto, and decentralized applications? Because there's so much action. People want to get on this wave and surf this puppy. What's happening? What, in your personal opinion, what is this wave all about? I mean, I, th I think that uh, this is, again, from uh, not comparing to the dot-com era, but it's giving the average person the ability to get into real industry. It's allowing everyone to be a participant, an investor, a developer, uh, an overall embracer of the technology that you haven't seen in a long time. Usually the technical, the, you know, de uh, software development and, and, and putting out products takes a lot of technical skill. And, and this has really kind of encouraged everyone to embrace it, look at it, and, and, and allows everyone to participate. It's a basically the democratization of society. Absolutely. But it's also the democratization of a world economy, not a local economy. And the locals can play and customize it for their own personal needs. Absolutely. Well, Puerto Rico's got a great opportunity. Luis, thanks for coming on. CEO of GrainChain.io. I'm John Furrier at the Blockchain Unbound Conference. Day one of two days of coverage. We're talking to all the experts, entrepreneurs, thought leaders, investors. More live coverage after this short break.